Hi, Glenn Sanford here. And uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about some business tips. And so these are tips that uh, if you're a new agent, experienced agent, somebody who's trying to go to the next level, things that you can incorporate into your business uh, that hopefully can take you to a new level. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about really the concept of putting yourself on salary. And um, literally since 2002, um, as I became more active, and especially as I started to build out um, a team and actually have staff and et cetera, one of the things that I needed to do uh, fairly early on, and I think I did it within probably uh, less than a year, I, I had actually put myself on salary. And, and one of the reasons was is I'd, you know, I had a number of mentors uh, growing up in business. And so one of the things that we, we talked about, uh, a gentleman that... Uh, um, uh, Jerry Salberg was actually the, his name. He's now passed away. But uh, one of the things he talked about was the idea of, you know, when you build out your business plan, make sure that you put yourself on a reasonable salary on your own business plan. And then um, to the extent that you can, you know, pay yourself the salary. And so even if you can't pay yourself a reasonable salary today, maybe you're just getting started, maybe uh, you're just starting to get your income going, um, maybe you have some, some uh, um, business debt that you're trying to pay off for some reason, but for whatever reason, you can't pay yourself a reasonable salary, still figure out what a reasonable salary would be for you and your business. And what this will do is it'll allow you to start to build out your P&L for your business, and you'll actually be able to put yourself on salary. You're the CEO of your own real estate company, um, obviously, it's powered by or brokered by EXP Realty, but it's your own business. And so, you know, the more that you can treat it like a business, the more likely it is that you're going to get the types of results that a well-managed business um, will, will produce. And so one of the things is to think about, you know, what is, um, what's a reasonable salary? In, in the beginning stages, uh, even though I was paying myself less than maybe some of the other quote-unquote top producers were getting paid because they were basically living off of every commission check and then going out and spending it and going on vacations, which all that's great. They would go into sort of this feast-famine kind of mode. So they'd, they'd feast and then they'd be famine and they'd be struggling and then they'd be worried about bills and then they'd, then they'd go back into feast mode and then they'd go back into famine mode. And there'd just be this sort of whipsaw that would take place in their business and, and uh, uh, I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of agents do burn out over time is because they're not actually running it like a business. So think about, you know, what is a reasonable salary? And so it may, might be, you know, uh, compared to the job that you previously had, if you came from another position, maybe you were making 45, 55, 65,000 a year. And so that's where your, your bills and your budget is for your, for your household. Think about you know using that as your initial baseline of a uh, of a salary, and keep in mind again that you may not be able to pay yourself a salary. But one of the things you can do is you can defer that income to a future date. So as you look at your PL, maybe um, you haven't paid yourself the let's just say it's six thousand a month, or maybe it's ten thousand a month, which would be you know in today's day and age maybe more akin to the expenses of running a uh, a household and, and all the other things that go along with that. But figure out what that number is. What should be your salary? And, and put that on your, uh, on your P&L. And if you can't pay yourself, defer that salary to a future date. And so you're going to basically start to build out um, uh, a way to account for uh, your business. Um, so deferring income is perfectly acceptable and it also gives you a better sense of what your business actually produces. So if you think about the idea of taking your business eventually to the seventh level, which basically means that you move from actually running a business to owning a business, uh, if you think about that whole concept, then you know putting yourself on a reasonable salary now makes a lot of sense because you can start to actually now work on the P&L, see how profitable the business becomes over time, and eventually, if you choose to, you can move somebody into that seat in your organization um, because you've actually run this like a actual business. So, so first thing, 
I, I think about is to put yourself on salary. And you can certainly think about things like setting up an LLC or setting up an S Corp, which um, certainly uh, I would recommend over time. You don't have to do it day one, but it's something that if you talk to an, an accountant, or they're going to say that if you make over X, you're going to uh, save money because you're going to be able to avoid certain taxes that are that are. Uh, based on self-employment taxes, and you'll be able to sort of defer that and, and not defer it, but you won't even have to pay it because of the way that your know, S-Corps and, and uh, work and, and LLCs work, and then also the sort of the flow through nature of, of the taxation. So, you know, setting up an S-Corp, setting up a, C, uh, uh, a LLC um, will, will make some sense as well. And then as you start to build out your P&L, and again, your you know P and L is your profit and loss statement. There's two two statements that you're going to have in business. One is your P and L, and that's your that's your monthly profit and loss. And you're going to w- want to be able to see that on a monthly basis, at a minimum, um, a quarterly basis. My 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 suggestion, especially uh, agents, your business really is a month to month business, and so you should be working on your lead gen strategy. You know, at, and and thinking about you know, where are you at. On your lead gen strategy, where are you at? You know, income wise, where are you at with clients in the pipeline? And then ultimately, all this stuff sort of sort of dials into or or flows into your P and L. And then for your P and L, um, you're going to then have a certain amount of cash that's in the bank. Hopefully, you don't have any debt, but if you do, you want to be able to account for your cash, any debt that you have, any any of the 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 uh, things that you use in your business. Uh, to ultimately run your business, even things like you know client meetings and food and drink and entertainment, you you want to start to think about those things over time, um, and and I'll, I'll just just from my perspective, one, one thing is sometimes um, you know depending on what you're trying to do, uh, you may want to even defer some of those um, conversations based on what's the big, hairy audacious goal that you're going after because sometimes that's uh, that's where you where you should spend your time and energy. But first thing is put yourself on salary, develop a PNL, uh, and 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 then eventually be able to pull a, a balance sheet. And uh, a lot of times you can actually hire a outside bookkeeper to do some of this stuff fairly inexpensively. So if you're not really a a PNL or a budget person, you're not going to type in numbers on a spreadsheet. Which, by the way, I really was never really good at that side of the business. But I had a good sense of, you know, the business we were running, the income we were making, um, and then ultimately what, you know, cash in the bank was key because we're really a cash-based business if you think about it. And I look at, you know, monthly, was my, was my cash going up? Was it going down? Was it going sideways? Was I paying myself a salary, which I was? And then the other thing is that even if you're on salary, you might go, well, then I'm not going to be able to pay myself or do something bigger in the future. There's nothing wrong with taking an owner's draw at some point in the future. In fact, that's one of the benefits of owning, uh, putting it through an LLC or an S corp, uh, is that you can do an owner's draw, but you're doing it based on actually having the money um, that you've you built up over time, and then taking an owner's draw or doing an owner's distribution uh, from your accounts to you over and above your salary. And so it really does allow you to really run your business like a business. It's one of those um, forcing functions. Once you put yourself on salary, you'll start to run your business differently because now, even though you're out doing deals and you're still going to set goals, you're still going to you know, make things happen, you can start to think about how much am I spending on my lead gen? How much am I spending on staff? How much you're, or, or more, a better way to think about it is how much am I investing in my lead gen? How much am I investing in my staff? How much am I investing in different parts of the business? Because your nuts already covered. Now you can think about, you know, how do I grow the business? Um, and sort of like Aesop's fable, how do you build your own golden goose? How do you build that goose? And and don't go after all the eggs at once, which is called, you know, basically cutting up your golden goose, looking for for, for the golden eggs. But take care of your your golden goose, which is your business, so that it can lay lots of little golden eggs for you along the way, which is really you know what the purpose of owning a business is is to actually you know provide the output that you're looking for as an owner. So one of the phrases that I remember Don Hobbs uh, gave me years ago when I went to Hobbs Herger event was was the purpose of a business is to serve the needs of the owner. 
Um, but first and foremost, in order to have a business, you have to treat it like a business. And so one of the first things you can do is put yourself on salary. So that's my tip for today. I uh, hope you guys are doing great wherever you're at, and I will uh, talk to you soon. Okay, thanks everyone. Okay, bye-bye.